Hey guys, Brandon here Productions here, and um, you wanted it, so here it is. Part 2 of how to implement a MySQL database into your own VB.NET software. Now, um, I forgot a very important step in Part 1, and that was to actually download the framework that allows you to use a MySQL server in a in the uh, in your VB.NET project. So um, I'm at the official My MySQL um, website right here, and uh, here's all the components that you can have. Uh, now these components are actually version 6.3.6, and I don't know what has changed, but I'm using the version 6.2.4. So there will be two links in the description, one to link 6.3.6 .6 and one that links version 6.2.4. Um, I'm going to be using version 6.2.4 throughout this series of tutorials, So, and 6.2.4 works out perfectly. So if you really want to um, follow along, then go ahead and do that. So once you download your package, it should come with an installer, a .msi installer. Go ahead and just run that and install it. I'm going to go ahead and do that right now for you guys. It's very easy. You're just gonna want to. Um, okay. Uh, and then it'll go pretty fast. And then once you're done, you are done. And you shouldn't notice anything different on your desktop or anything like that because it's not an actual application. It's simply a component for VB.NET. Now we're going to actually start the project. Um, so I'm gonna open up Visual Studio 2010. And then I'm going to start a new project, and I'm just go going to go ahead and call this one, uh, let's say, MySQL Tutorial. And then uh, that should load. Okay, so now the first thing you want to do when you start this project is actually add a reference, and this reference is going to be toward the... Uh, the thing you just installed, the MySQL. So we're going to go to the, I think it's the, yes, the .NET category of add reference, and then just choose MySQL.data. And then the library will be successfully imported into your project, and you could start right away uh, using your database in your project. So first thing we want to do before we actually make it so users can register or uh, log in, we're going to want to import the library. You can do this by going above your public class form one and simply typing imports mysql dot data. And then once that's done, you are ready to go. Now um there there's a couple steps you need to take to further set up your MySQL uh client to communicate with the server that you set up in part one. So what we're going to actually do is log into that server and get some information that we need. So we're just going to go to db4free.net and then log in. Now hopefully none of you messed with my account because then I'll have to make a new one and then it'll just take time. Alright, let's see what we got here. Well, it looks good so far. All right. Well, thank you very much, guys, for not messing with my account. I really do appreciate that. All right. So, what you want to do is um, let me see if I can find it. It's got to be somewhere on here. There's going to be some information somewhere. Give me two seconds. Okay, just hold on one second. I'll find this information for you. Okay, so after a quick Google search, I have uh, come up with the information that we need for this website, and I've actually written it down in a notepad document. So we're going to get to that when it's needed. Now, what we want to do is um, 
the first thing we're going to want to do is make the user so they can actually log in. So we're going to need a few controls on our form, obviously. Uh, we're just we're not even going to add labels because that is too time consuming. So we're just going to add two text boxes and a button. Very nice, very nice. Now we're going to name the text of text box one to be username and the text of text box two to be password. Okay, so now when we double click the button, we actually want to see um, if the username and password that are entered exist. So the first thing we're going to need to do is set up a connection to the MySQL server. So right under public class form one, you're going to want to type public con as new MySQL. as new MySQL connection. No. Okay, wait one second. Where we said imports MySQL.data, we figure out MySQL client. So just go ahead and press dot MySQL client. So then we're going to type public con as new MySQL connection. And then in parentheses, it's going to want the connection string as string. Now this is what I actually saved in the um, in the text document. There is certain syntax that uh, MySQL wants us to type and it goes like this um, server equals and then the server which in our case is db4free.net semicolon port equals 3306 semicolon user space ID equals and then your username semicolon password and then your password semicolon database equals and then uh, the database name you set up which in my case was the same as the username I believe yes Okay, so once we're done with that, we are just going to go down to button one dot click. Now, now that we've got the um, connection uh, parameters set up, we're going to want to try to open the connection first. So we're just going to type con dot open. This will open the connection and make it so uh, we can actually access the data inside. Now what we want to do is actually check to see if the username we typed is inside the um, is inside the server. So the first thing we're going to want to do is dim a couple variables. We're going to dim SQL query as string equal to, and then we're just going to leave that blank for now. We're also going to need a MySQL um, data reader and a MySQL data adapter. Jeez, I cannot type today. And then on top of that, we're going to need a command. My SQL command. And then from there, we should be good. So the first thing we want to do is create the actual command. Now, this is going to be using the uh, the SQL language, my SQL language. So I'm just going to go ahead and give it to you. In order to look for something inside MySQL, you're going to need to type select everything from and then the table that you're actually looking for. And in our case, the table is called new table. So from new table, where, and then we need to specify where what. So in our case, it's going to be where username equals where username equals and then we're going to need to close the colons um, actually no add one of these things and text box one dot text and colon this uh, semicolon now I believe this is the correct syntax. Um, I'm sorry if I get it wrong, and it's later in the tutorial that I get it wrong. But from for now, we're selecting um, a certain thing from the new table where username is textbox one dot text, and then we're going to actually execute the command. So we're going to say uh, command dot command text equals SQL query, and then adapter dot select whoops select command equals command and we're actually also gonna sorry for that weird uh, 
that was sorry. <laughs> um, command uh, connection. We're going to make sure that equals con our connection that we set up earlier. And then finally, we're going to need to say data dot. No, we're just going to say data equals adapter dot dot. Okay, now this is the one part I forget. <laughs> dot execute reader adapter data equals command dot execute reader. Yes. So this is all you need to do. Now, since I'm running a little low on time, I'm going to speed it up and skip the uh, the actual explanation. But um, right now, what we're pretty much doing is we're telling the server to find this in uh, long amounts of code. And then we're going to say, uh, while data.read, uh, if data.hasRows equals true, then. So if data.hasRows, that means that we have in fact selected where the username is textbox1.text and then we're going to say if data two dot two string equals textbox two dot text then message box whoops login whoa login okay else message box failed login Uh, and then we're also going to want to do an else here, else message box failed login. Now I know this looks really confusing to you right now, but what we're going to actually do is set up a user account on our SQL Server and try to log in. So we're going to want to press insert on our SQL or my SQL thingy, and then we're just going to leave ID blank, username I'm going to name it Brandonio, and password I'm going to name it password, and then I'm going to press go. And that has successfully created a um, an account that we can use. Uh, as we can see, username, brand new password, password. So now if we start the program, the application, uh, we get an error right away. Hold up, let me fix this since I'm running out of time. OK, so this was a simple error that I missed. Um, when it says public class form one, you need to type public con as MySQL connection. And then down when button one dot click, you need to say con equals new MySQL connection. Uh, yeah, that should be right. All right, so now we're going to run the project. And uh, username, I'm going to type in Brandonio. Password, I'm going to type in password. And then press button one, and then it will take a little while to um, load because it's connecting to servers. But uh, other than that, we have logged in successfully. Now, if we uh, type in a different password, like password gg, it says failed login because we typed in the incorrect password. No brainer. But um, yeah, so I'm sorry if I was going a little fast. I was pressed for time, and this is a kind of a long tutorial to make for a login but hey if you keep subscribing uh, I will get that partnership and I can make long tutorials so um thanks for watching this tutorial please stu stay tuned in for part three where uh, we will talk how to make like register an account through an application and uh, remember to rate comment subscribe all right see you guys bye